What's going on guys? My name is Nadim and today I want to talk about why I don't think a lot of people should pull EX Kaido. Now I don't want anyone to think that this means that I think EX Kaido is bad in any way, shape or form. I think he is the best, the strongest character in the game right now. Indeed, I think he's more powerful than Roger and Akainu, but he has a very distinct playstyle that not a lot of people will appreciate and that's why I don't think a lot of people should pull. Now I do want to mention something very important first. So a couple days ago I made a community post and in that community post I talk about how there is a chance that EX Kaido isn't the only EX coming this anniversary. And one reason people believe this is the scout points being tripled. Normally you only need to go up to 150. However now you need to go up to 450. If you pull on the Kaido banner there's no problem, you get 30 per multi. But when you will pull on any other banner this month, you will only get 10. Now, if there was nothing else that's hyped this month, why would Bandai triple Kaido's thing, right? If something like a normal step up was to come out, who cares if you pull on the step up, right? It's better to pull on Kaido, so they wouldn't need to triple this. And so people believe that there might be another EX, perhaps Olin, perhaps Blackbeard, perhaps Luffy. I don't think this is the case. There are more points that I'll talk about in a bit, but I don't see it happening. I think Olin deserves her own thing later on. Blackbeard, probably for the 3.5. And Timeskip Luffy, if there is going to be an EX this year, I think they will release it on his birthday. Just because if they release an EX now, many people will skip the one on his birthday. So, I don't see it happening. And especially when we consider the fact that EX Kaido is so good. But it's also Kaido. Like, he is a main anniversary kind of character. He's not a sideshow. He's not someone that should be overshadowed by another EX. He shouldn't have to share the spotlight with anyone else. The live stream didn't showcase a possibility. We already got another EX in Yamato. I don't see them doing this. I think it would be very scummy. And. I just don't see him do I, I mean, there's no reason for them to do this. Kaido is already hype enough, and I don't see them doing it. A lot of people already pulled, and so it would suck for them as well if they like the other EX more. But that's one point people are making. So Happy OPBR or Luchi did compile a bunch of reasons as to why some of the parallels don't add up. Right? First off, Blackbeard and Odin were both the scout point rewards just the way Kaido is. They also came with event medals, and Kaido's coming with event medals. Roger and Shanks both had number 2 on their banner, and they also had tickets that came with them. So that's some of the reasons why people think it's a bit fishy for Kaido to be the only and last EX. Now of course, you know, obviously we already got Yamato, but she came early, so some people are saying that because she came early, there's still a chance for another one. And fair enough, that might be the case, I can't guarantee anything. But I also want to mention that a parallel simply is that Roger came on the anniversary day, Shanks came on the anniversary day, and now Kaido came on the anniversary day. 28th is the anniversary day. Now, yes, Kaido came on the 27th, but I don't think that should change any reasonable assumption. Also, the fact that um, Shanks and Roger came with number 2 on their banner is one of the reasons people think that Kaido not having number 2 will not be the only one. Now, fair enough. Again, I can't guarantee that there won't be another one. But I also want to say Bandai has changed the naming scheme, right? So, right, they, they called this one the uh, Thank You Bounty Fest, second anniversary, here's third anniversary, thank you. So they do change the naming schemes, right? I was talking to Seven Days and he did mention that uh, Rob Lucci, right, coming right before 1.5 anniversary was um, called the 1.5 anniversary banner. But he wasn't the 1.5 anniversary. Also, last year, we did not get an anniversary. So, parallels don't always work. However, these are some solid arguments that makes you think, right? If they weren't solid enough, I wouldn't have brought them up in this video. I want to show you guys this clip from this Japanese player that's not only full of life in his commentary, but also at the top of the Japanese leaderboards. And this guy plays the game a lot, of course, but is also really good at it. And watching him play the game is fantastic. And he also maxes out so many things, so you can always watch him. And oh my god, he's so good. But I want you guys to check out this clip and tell me what you notice. And if there's something different than your normal games. Do you see the piece? 
Do you see how long it takes before someone initiates anything? And notice how the Akainus aren't the ones initiating because they know that the perfect dodge from Rayleigh is really, really dangerous for them. And notice how the Rayleigh did not use his skills instantly, right? They play slow, they play methodical, and they make sure that things get done. Us in the global version, we're not like that. We like to get things done by using our skills, by using our normals, by going in. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, right? Of course, the Japanese players have their own meta and we have our own meta. But some global players play slow. Most of us, we like to go in, use our skills. And this is something that Nico-chan talks about a lot. And the beauty about Nico-chan's channel is that not only does she provide a lot of insight on the Japanese player base, but she also plays the global, so she can make comparisons. And in her most recent video, talking about Kaido and his counters and all of that, she makes a lot of good points about the global version, so make sure to go check her out. Fantastic channel in Nico-chan. But there's a difference, right? And the global players love being offensive. This means we do not work well with Kaido's passive playstyle. Now, you guys know I love using robin i still use her a lot and i love using her so much now i feel like you can see two of me which is a bit weird but the thing with robin is that she sits on that flag and as long as you don't knock her back it's impossible to kill her she's actually a bit tankier than kaido because she gets her 70 percent defense is harder to get but when she uses this hand skill she actually gets 70 percent extra damage reduction of course she's she can't move while she does that but she can get heals more consistently with it and stuff. Now, what I'm trying to say is that her playstyle is very much like Robin. And you can ask so many people, but they think she is the most boring character in the game. So the second you can compare Kaido to her, it's all over, right? It's when a lot of people think he's bad. But he's not bad. He's insane. And so let's talk about some differences about these two characters. They both get their heal from skill 1. Of course, Robin just has to activate it while he needs to actually get a knockback. Now, of course, he can get knockbacks from skill 2, but it's much easier for him to get the knockbacks from his skill 1. Also, they both get their tankiness from their increase in defense. Kaido gets his increase much easier, but Robin also gets the advantage of 70% damage reduction when she's using her skill 1. But here's what makes Kaido really annoying. Robin, whenever you deal small damage, you're just wasting time, right? You're charging back her skill 1 or whatever. But with Kaido, you actually end up healing him. So if you deal 1% of his HP, you heal back 3%. If you deal 0.1% of his HP, you heal back. You actually end up just healing with that. So he becomes so much more annoying to deal with because your teammates can heal him, right? Someone wastes time on Robin, that's fine. You can come and kill her if you're ready or you're a counter. But now with Kaido, because he can get healed from a dumb teammate that's just stacking his heal. Also, he's obviously much easier to get, but... He doesn't have the one big downfall Robin has, which is the knockback. So if he cannot get knocked back, then how do you get him off the flag? Well, simply you do not, <laughs> right? You do not. You have to wait for team boost and team boost counters the defense. He also can fight much better than Robin. He also deals much more damage than Robin. He also has two knockbacks. And so his downfall ends up being the same one as Robin. You have to rely on the team to push. If the team pushes, well, you can capture the flag and defend it. With your skill two, you make sure that anyone flanking does not end up capturing because you see as soon as they're close to the flag, you use it and it comes down and you can help prevent it healing yourself in the process. In a 1v1 fight, you actually deal so much damage. Akainu definitely was the best character in the game. He deals very well with because as long as that capture is full, he cannot get anti-healed or confused or incinerated or anything. He's a monster that's impossible to deal with. Even if you have Roger fully stacked, as long as he knocks you back with one of his skills, you lose all your attack buffs. And I'm not saying Roger is not a good counter, but I'm just saying that it's not as easy as some people want to believe. So Kaido on his treasure area is amazing, but of course, you cannot push with him, right? He's not good for pushing until you have team boost, and then you can use your skill 1 and maybe deal some damage. Oh, of course, he's insane healing with his team boost recovery, which Blackbeard and Odin have. That's also insane. So, yeah, he's a monster. He's the best EX in my opinion. And when they release counters to him, I'll be so sad because those counters would also be counters to Robin, which hurts, but that's fine. <laughs> Before we talk more in depth about the counters that I think are available in the game right now, I want to talk about Nico-chan making such a good video on Kaido that I think more people need to see. But just to give you an idea of how much damage Chopper can deal with his ignore defense or ignore damage reduction skill on Kaido, this is a fully boosted Kaido, and as you can see, it dealt a lot of his health. 
course, the Kaido wasn't fully stacked because the Luffy helped him fill up the flag so he didn't get all the buffs. But maybe he's at 40% defense extra, but he still dealt a lot of damage. Now, of course, Kaido can heal back and he will heal back and you should watch the video, but there's so much to learn in here. But the point I want to make is that some characters already exist that can deal with Kaido. They're not the best at dealing with anyone else necessarily, but they're really good at dealing with Kaido. So he's not invincible. He's still hard to deal with. Though. So we talk about Kaido, of course. Two counters that come to mind are Odin, right? If you don't stack up, Odin can deal more damage to defenders. Sometimes you'll be so buffed up that Odin still doesn't do anything to you. But if you're filled up the treasure, well... He's not the biggest problem because at least he can't knock you back up. And if you knock him back, you heal, right? Even if he knocks you back, you just fall on the floor, which is fantastic. Of course, the biggest threat in the game is our friend Roger, right? Roger deals so much damage and he can get attack buffs. And attack buffs is how you counter Kaido. Of course, ignore defense is another way, but having so much attack and being green makes Roger really, really good. Potentially making him the best attacker in the game now if we see more Kaido because Akainu is not that great at dealing with uh, Kaido. In fact, I think Akainu is pretty poopy at dealing with Kaido. But yeah, Roger's attack buff is really, really good, but Kaido can remove them. But still, even then, Roger's can deal decent damage. Of course, if Kaido's fully buffed, it still becomes a more even matchup, and that's the beauty of Kaido. There's no easy counter yet. So let's talk a bit about the other counters in the game. Of course, Shanks could be with his attack buffs. Anyone that ignores defense could also be someone that could deal damage to Kaido. But a good option, of course, is Jack, right? Jack can buff up up to 75%. He's a new character that's already very strong. But of course, if you do not get your buffs up very quickly with Jack, which is harder to get than Kaido, you end up just dealing nothing. So I do want to mention that Jack is not a counter that's so easy to just, you know, play against Kaido. Uh, the other one that I want to talk about is Luffy Taro. Now, where is my boy? Luffy Taro being very, very strong against any defender in general, just because he has this trait, increased damage to defenders by 50% in any treasure area, yours or theirs, which makes him so good at dealing with Kaido. Of course, he has very nice skills and an invincibility, and only Luffy or Wano Luffy is already a very, very strong option. And of course, we talked about Chopper, which I still do not have. But this Chopper, both his skills have ignored damage reduction or ignored defense, making him a very solid pick. And overall, he's still a very, very, very strong unit that can do amazing things. You can inflict Tremor with this skill as well and debuff their defense. Of course, Tremor doesn't work on Kaido because you have to assume that he'll be in his treasure area that's already filled more than 80%. So finally, let's look at OP Lookman's gameplay when he does use Kaido. I can understand the sentiment that Robin is very bland and boring. I want you guys to listen to Lookman when he finally gets to use his skill on his video. Level 80 Kaido only. Okay. <laughs> oh, that feels so satisfying. You heard the man. It is satisfying. Not only is it satisfying to do it, now of course, Odin was low HP. I'm not saying this is a killing skill, especially not a level 80 Kaido. Kaido is one of the units that kind of require to be level 100 and um, get as much defense as possible. Maybe throw in a uh, Zoan tag. Grand line is not the most important thing, but this is amazing. You become a beast. You become a dragon. People in the game will see you from afar. You just look like a majestic dragon. You tell me that's not satisfying. I don't know what to tell you. Of course, he is a brilliant, brilliant character, and he does the defensive job very, very good. And here in a bit, he will fight Roger. And this is a level 80 Kaido, of course, I want to mention to you guys. So uh, I will mute the video just so we can talk over it. But make sure to check out Luckman. I'm sure you're all already subbed anyways. But there's a Roger coming to him. And uh, as you can see, that's his teammate. Now look, Kamsari, of course, uh, he used dodge abuse here. But as you can see, Roger's not dealing that much damage to him. And he did get a stack from the Kamusari, but after the knockback, he lost the attack buff. Right, so now the Roger doesn't have an attack buff. And after this, Roger gets... Uh, oh, Roger dodges, actually. But yeah, as you can see, Roger's not dealing that much damage. I'm not saying Roger doesn't deal damage, but you can tank it. It's not like you're just gonna get destroyed by Roger all the time. Of course, a fully buffed Roger will deal more damage, but... Team Boost Roger is definitely going to destroy, but he has Team Boost as well. Team Boost doesn't buff defense that much, though. Um, but yeah, of course, 
Again, here, knockback, you remove. So, Lookman's playing out of his mind right now. But this is a level 80 Kaido. Of course, I could show you level 100, but most global YouTubers that have level 100 gameplay are posting other people's gameplay, not their own. And I don't really care to showcase that too much. So, yeah, shout out to Lookman playing out of his mind to outplay this Roger right here. So, yeah, guys, at the end of the day, he is an amazing EX. He is the tankiest defend defender in the game by far. I think he's way better than Oni Kid. But of course, Oni Kid fits the playstyle of most players more. And that's why some people like him and gravitate towards him instantly. Being a very easy character. Get free damage when you're on the ground and do so much. Even if you're not playing the game, right? So, I just want to mention, he's amazing. But, not everyone will enjoy using this character. So, a lot of you guys know Punk OPPR is a beast. Make sure to check him out and... He's destroying with Kaido. I'm going to show a clip and talk a bit over it. Uh, final points, I guess, about Kaido, but um, he's a beast. Now, listen to this. Ah, we hear Robin's infamous move, Escanor Bite. Brilliant. Now, it's so cool to see both Kaido and Robin, like, together, because they do the same thing, right, as we talked about earlier. Quick note, by the way, this extra flag I memed on the fact that Orobi's getting a buff. But this doesn't add too much to Robin's capture time. I think Lucci, again, happy OPBR, make sure to check him out. Link in the description. Told me that runners get an extra three seconds, so probably way less than that for Robin. But like an attacker takes about 15 seconds, and now it buffs up to over 20 seconds to capture a flag. For 20 something seconds, you're just standing there capturing the flag filled up by Kaido. Like, that's a long time, by the way. Like, they can literally respawn. And walk back to you and stop you from capturing. Like, it makes playing a runner or attacker, sorry, an attacker or a defender, so much worse because it takes forever to capture a flag. So, when you finally get rid of the Kaido, if you can, and you capture the flag, it takes forever. You need a teammate with you, you need a runner capturing it. Otherwise, oh my god. Yeah. So, Kaido is a beast, but not for everyone. Yeah, at the end of the day, he's not the one who's gonna get you a lot of points. Now, of course, um, Punk here is gonna get tons of points because he's a beast um but in general he's not the one who's gonna get you tons of points like he's not gonna get you 12k 13k unless the enemy just spends the whole game spamming you for zero damage but for the most part akainu and roger will get you tons more points it will be easier to climb right if you get more points you get more score you climb a bit faster but Akain, i mean kaido is still a fantastic unit still in my opinion the best and so yeah, at the end of the day, this was a long video. I said that already, I think. Um, but yeah, I had fun making it. Hope you guys learned something or two from watching it. Yeah.